Unsurprisingly, the player that's being talked about in this whole deal is not even the best player in this trade, obviously. Larry Nance Jr. is. And a lot of people obviously know this, but the headlines and the media and whatnot, they have you talking about Larry Markkinen because he's the main guy that's being acquired by the Cleveland Cavaliers for what essentially is another Ford that they're trading away to Portland. Now, this freeway deal is very, uh, very interesting because to me, it only leads me to thinking one thing, and that is that Cleveland will still not make the playoffs. Chicago now has room to play more guys without Lowry being in, involved. And now you have Portland acquiring a very good defensive forward in Nance that could play well alongside Nurkic. And then when you want to play smaller, you could put Robert Covington at the four and then put Nance at the five. And I'm sure there are tons of different ways that Chauncey can put this team together to really utilize them well. Now, in my opinion, I do think that Larry Nance is the clear best player out of all of the players traded. So Portland essentially trading away Derrick Jones Jr. and a lottery protected 2022 draft pick is essentially a steal in my opinion. I don't think people realize how good Larry Nance actually is because of the fact that he was playing in Cleveland for so long. But after Nance got traded from the Lakers to the Cavs, he was in the championship team. But then, after LeBron left to go in his former team, he was beginning to be sidelined even more. You see his numbers dip. He had 8 rebounds a game at his peak and then now you see him having averaging 6.7 rebounds a game as of last season. And his points total also peaked in 2020 where he averaged 10 points a game for the first time in his career. And you have a player that could potentially give you a double-double on a consistent basis. Now, of course, that's not even the best part about acquiring a player like Larry Nance. It's the versatility and the defensive prowess that he already possesses at such a young age. Now, he's 28. Of course, that's not too young. But I'm pretty sure that he's going to be very much mobile and very much going to be able to defend a lot of the players that he's matched up against. And to be honest, I don't think he was really given a shot in Cleveland to really ball out. And that's unfortunate, but Portland can change that and hopefully they do because I really do think this guy will be a very key player for the Blazers moving forward. So now what does that say about Markkinen? Is he just going to be on yet another dead-end team where he averages, what, 13 points a game like he did last season, 5 rebounds a game for the Bulls? Is that really worth $67 million for 4 years? Is Cleveland really going to go with a lineup of 3 7 footers and Allen, Markkinen, and Mobley? Guys, the Cleveland Cavaliers are confusing me, and I'm not sure if the Cleveland Cavaliers know this, but I don't think a lineup with 3 7 foot guys can fly in this modern day. So, are the Cavaliers crazy? Or is Markin actually going to be pushed to the bench for Okoro being at the free? Which is going to be very weird to pay somebody that much money to be a bench player. Well, to all Cleveland fans, I feel sorry for you that this is your team and that this is what they're doing. <laughs> oh, and did I forget to mention that the Cleveland Cavaliers still have Kevin Love in their lineup? Yeah, they are confusing me. I'm not even sure what they're doing. Now, I don't typically do trending hot topic videos very often, but when I do, I like to refer to you guys to one of my videos that I pretty much think is going to be an interesting watch for you at home. So if you guys want to watch that video, it's about Rachel Nichols. Yep. I'm really happy that we won't see her face covering NBA basketball anymore, but I'll go into why I think that's a good thing and I think you'll find it interesting. I hope to see you there. Bye bye.